So once again, if you have not seen The Flash, this video will have spoilers for that film, among other stuff as well. We're going to be talking about today on the Gita Movie Talk series, I'm joined by Hayden, we're going to be talking about what to do with DC, because um, the last time we did this topic, which we did do it once before, this was before James Gunn, this was right around the time the Snyder Cut came out and, you know, Zack Snyder was getting a whole bunch of love from people who wanted to see that version of Justice League. Now we're in a totally different animal because we've had not one, not two, but three simultaneous flops. And to be honest, the movies that flopped, which were Black Adam, Shazam 2, and Flash, they weren't even that bad. Like, the worst one of those three was probably Shazam, but... Yeah, me yeah, I don't think any of them were, like, terrible. But moving on now, we still have Aquaman and Blue Beetle left. James Gunn has announced his slate of movies. He's going to go with Superman. Was it Rebirth or what's it, what's it called again? Superman Legacy. Legacy. I think is one of the generic names you could possibly give a Superman movie. But, hey, you know. I mean, Batman Begins is kind of a lame name, too. But, I mean, they, they made it work. But, yeah. It's like yeah, any movie, anyway. Yeah, yeah, and so now it's become a lot more difficult. Like we discussed in the previous video, uh, casual fans must be scratching their head because we were supposed to see more Black Adam with Henry Cavill as Superman. We were supposed to see more from Amanda Waller. Don't forget the Peacemaker Season 2, and that's what's tying to Suicide Squad. We're supposed to see um, Dark Side coming to Earth. There's all these things they tease they're not going to do now. And the question I have for you here is, how do you course correct the DCEU so that the next few movies don't flop? Or is it a thing where you have to just kind of write it off and say, you know what, they're going to flop. We might as well just put them out and then refocus. Like, what can be done here, bro? Well, it seems like they've got them in the can already and just want to put them out just because. But James Gunn's been surprisingly open and candid about the fact that, like, yeah, this, this new thing really starts with this Superman legacy movie. However, in an interview recently, he said, well, he's like, well, the first uh, DC or new DCU uh, movie is going to be Blue Beetle. But then it really starts in Superman Legacy. So it seems like Blue Beetle, he's trying to fold in in some way or like retain that character. I think he either really likes the movie or maybe he doesn't want to, you know, maybe it's because it's a representation thing with it being a, a Latino uh, character, the first, you know, kind of like all latino led cast or i don't know if there's a political reason there but it looks like it's i like the trailer and it looks like it's going to be legitimately good Same. so i think he's going over um and but you know he's hopefully what i think is doing is trying to nail superman as the linchpin of the unit of the of the whole dcu because he truly is he's the, he's the central figure of dc comics that everything pretty much centers around. I mean, there's Batman, too. Batman's more popular as a character. But yeah. narratively, Superman is where the buck stops in the DCU, and you need to firmly establish a good Superman that people really like. And then I think for a, something that most modern audiences haven't seen is really nail the character in a way that comic book fans understand how good the character can be when done right. Superman is this character with so much potential. His world, his villains, is very, like, almost 1960s sci-fi with... You know, Brainiac yeah. and the Mr. Mr. Mrs. Spickley. Mr. Pitlick. It's very Silver Age. It can be very fun and bright. And I think that's something that James Gunn really wants to evoke with this new Superman Legacy movie. And that the Snyder version, that, that vision of Superman just wasn't capable of kind of doing. Um, that was much more of like a, a Man of Steel 80s post crisis on Infinite Earths kind of um, David Byrne. Not David Byrne, that's the guy from Talking Heads. Um, uh, you know, the guy that did X-Men, I can't, I can't remember his name, not Chris Brown, but Jim the, the Lee? artist. No, uh, Byrne, uh, what's his oh, name? Oh, Josh yeah. Byrne. Uh, uh, is it John Byrne? I thought it was Josh uh, Byrne. I know who you're talking about, though. It's, it's, man, it's, it's, uh, it's John Byrne, but, uh um, oh, no, it's John, okay, yes, I'm an idiot. But, yeah, so I think, and I'm really excited about that, because I've always said that Superman was just, like, was not done successfully in the previous iteration. I like, I, I they gave it a shot, but I honestly was never really big on Henry Cavill as an actor. I think his acting skills are. I, I think he looks a lot like how Clark would. Well, he looks like Superman, but that, that's about it. Look, you're never gonna get a more Superman-looking actor, honestly, probably. But I thought his acting <laughs> skills were a little left a little bit to be desired. Um, and yeah. so I really like that. And I and additionally to that, kind of a pairing off that. 
is Batman Brave and the Bold. I think that finally going for Robin, trying to attempt the Robin character and having that in a movie is going to be so refreshing. I mean, sure, it's the most unrealistic part of the whole Batman mythology. It almost makes no sense why he would train a young kid. Right. It does make more sense to be his son than having him take in like a random kid that he's endangering the life of every night and having his son be, you know, raised by the League of Assassins, the offspring of Talia al Ghul and, and grandson of Ra's al Ghul and all this stuff. Right. Uh, and and it is a little interesting that they're naming it the Brave and the Bold because that's usually reserved for Batman teaming up with another hero, like right. Green Arrow or the Flash. So I guess it'll be like him that. teaming up with Damian Wayne. Yeah, with his son. And and so I guess Batman's the Brave and Damian's the Bold. I don't know. I I but, would love it if in that movie they give us the court of, the Court of Owls. I would love that for that for that movie, like what they did in the animated one. That's that's I think what most people would say is the big. Batman villain that is, hasn't been adapted into a film that they really should do. And actually, Robert Pattinson, who is a huge Batman, like, aficionado now in preparation for his role in as the Batman, mm -hmm. um, he, like, super literate in all the Batman mythology. He was saying how, I mean, he was like, let it leak, and he was like, oh, I, I, Port of Owls, that's who I think we should do for the sequel. Um, so, that would be really cool uh, if, if they made it in. I totally agree with you that they should. But I, I suspect it will have somewhat of a light tone. They they showed the cover of uh, Grant Morrison's run on Batman, where Damien's introduced, and you have Dick Grayson as Batman and Damien as Robin. Now I don't know; they're not going to do Dick Grayson as Batman in this one. No, he, he might be but Nightwing. He might be Nightwing, and that would be really cool if they jump into like a full-on Bat family established. Like we got Nightwing. There's Batman, Batgirl, I mean, Oracle. I mean, James Gunn said that they wanted to do a Bat family. We haven't really seen that. I mean, the closest we came to that was Batman and Robin from Joel Schumacher. We actually had, you know, Barbara as as Bat, as Batgirl. I mean, unless you want to count the 60s show and the, not the anime shows. But we haven't seen that in live action. Now, I would love to see that. I would absolutely love to see it. I think I'm a huge fan of the Bat family. I like reading, like, a James... Tynan's Detective Comics run, which is like pretty much all about the Bat family. Tim Drake, Robin being like the central character there. Red Hood, of course, everyone loves. So I think uh, my gut would say that they're to to kind of differentiate themselves from the Batman, which is very much a detective, Bruce Wayne focused, gritty, realistic Batman story. They're going to make this one a little bit more in line with probably the campy. Uh, campy yeah, campy it, it, it'll be more lighthearted. I mean, James Gunn. He's a trauma guy, so you're not going to get... Yeah. You're going to get some emotion, because he obviously can do it with Guardians 2 and 3. You're going to get a lot of heart, but it's... I don't... He's not like Snyder. He's almost like the opposite of Snyder in many ways when you think about it. They're almost like polar opposites. Snyder wanted to go heavy on the Frank Miller, Dark Knight Returns, gritty, almost, you know, um, kind of Batman is a, you know, a killer, basically, in those. And, and he wanted to show that Batman... And I think that Ben Affleck, physically, all similar to Henry Cavill, just looked the part amazingly as that Batman. Or at least he did for, I think he, he looks a little bit weird in some of the other ones. But, but yeah, I mean, he's doing a lot of things right, which, and which is why I think that people should hold out hope that the DCU is going to get a lot better with under James Gunn's direction. Because the other thing he said, which I wish it wasn't a show, but Green Lantern, man. Where has Green Lantern been, mm, you know, right. at, at the end of the Snyder Cut or whatever, but like... Or maybe that was Martian Manor. No, it was Martian Manor, but but the lanterns were were shown in the theatrical cut, and then the Snyder right. cut they were mentioned they by Steppenwolf. Yeah, yeah, or Steppenwolf. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, when, he, when they a long time ago. Um, that is going to be a TV series, which you know I think it really should be. A well, it's got around. two different lanterns, and I like that because I like how they can have you know two guys having two separate problems and dealing with those powers. That's a pretty cool idea. He's also doing some other TV show. He's doing Swamp Thing, which I was not expecting at all. Yeah, yeah after they canned the uh, the old Swamp Thing show, which was, you know, apparently a really good show. I never watched it. It was only got like three or four episodes. I didn't watch it because it got axed like midway through production. But apparently that was a good show. And I think that that is such an important character. I mean, Alan Moore's work on Swamp Thing is so good. And even some of the later stuff by Charles Soule, or the stuff by Scott Snyder from the New 52 was still good. They did Rot World. I mean, Animal Man could be a character in that show, too. A really, really good character who often collaborates or crosses over with Swamp Thing. Well, uh, let, let and, me ask you. Would you... What do you do with Flash, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman? Because right now, they, they don't have any projects slated in the Gunverse. 
And he stays in Add More, but there's nothing for those three characters. You could bring back Gal Gadot. You could bring back Momoa. Ezra Miller, I don't see that happening, but you never know. Um, what do you do with those three characters? Do you recast Flash or use a different Flash? Not Barry, but a different Flash and just kind of like start that over again? Definitely a few routes you could take with that. I think they were they were looking at the box office success of the Flash just now to see how likely it was or like how willing they'd be to retain Ezra Miller for another movie. I think that he was on thin ice and this movie not performing well, largely probably due to people not wanting to see it because of them starring in it. Um, I think that that probably spells the end for for Ezra as the Flash. Now, whether or not they they recast a Barry Allen and try to keep going with Barry Allen, that's one thing. I, I don't think Ezra Miller really ever acted or looked that similar to Barry Allen as we know them and as we know Barry Allen to be in the comics. Totally he different. He was not, you know, super impulsive, ADHD, kind of quirky guy. He was a little quirky, but he's a little absent-minded at times, but he was not like that. Um, but what they really could do, and I think what people would really embrace, is Wally West. Who yeah. Who is the flat of so many of our childhoods and, 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 you know, growing up. He was the Flash in the Justice League cartoon. Uh, Barry Allen died in Crisis on Infinite Earths, so Wally West was the Flash for 20 years. Maybe they should uh, just go with that. They should just go with that. I mean, why not? They really should. I mean, I he's my favorite Flash, Wally West. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's definitely one direction they could take it. Now, the other stars, uh, Henry Cavill, he's gone, but... Um, Wonder Woman and Aquaman, it seems, based on what James kind of says, that like he's open to talking to any of them and seeing if they want to reprise their roles. Couldn't do Superman because he has a different vision for that and they want to kind of refresh with that. But it seems like, I mean, if Aquaman's being offered his role, then why not Gal Gadot? She crushed it as Wonder Woman. So, um, it, but it is weird. Like, it's kind of half, you know, it's, it's, you're not going, you're either going all in or you're not, it feels like with this new james gunn universe it's going to confuse people more and it's going to feel like you're still living in the past a little bit by oh well there's gal gadot what happened to her it's kind of like when they did the new 52 uh that it, reboot yeah. of the comics line in 2011 and like some characters had their whole backstories changed in a race but some comics which were successful before that just picked up where they left off like green lantern just continued the jeff johns storyline like nothing happened there really wasn't any change there Batman it's, didn't really it's, see it is it is pretty similar, man, because DC's had numerous reboots throughout its history. It's almost like, you know, life imitating art or art imitating life imitating art. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't uh, know. It, it's weird. Supergirl also is one of the movies on their slate. Now, they're going to choose Sasha Cali or Kaye. I, I, I don't, don't know, know man. I don't know if they're, ever, if they're even going to use those actors again. It's almost like he wants to bring in like a brand new cast. And it's unfortunate yeah, and, because we we really didn't see Henry Cavill Superman all that much when you really think about it. We didn't see him really stretch his legs, and that's already been canceled. And, of course, we're going to get our, like, 12th Batman at this rate, you know, um, when we get to Brave and the Bold. I mean, at least he has direction, but, like, like you said, the f casuals, like, I feel like when, when they actually start this, when they actually get the Superman um, legacy... You know how the movies nowadays are opening up with the director saying, like, uh, thanking people for seeing the movie? I think what they should do here is have James Gunn open up and thank them and say, we're going in a different direction now. Those movies don't count. So that way, at least the people who are casuals, who don't know anything, will understand. Because there's people... Yeah, there's people, bro, who are cosplayers. And I know because Andy told me about it. Last year, or no, two years ago, they went to Tampa Bay Comic Con, and they were Andy asked them about the Snyder Cut. They had no idea what he was talking about. Like, these casual fans just see Superman and Batman, and they say, oh, I'm going to go see that movie, not knowing anything. And another thing, too, bro, is that I think they're trying so hard to keep up with Marvel. That's all they've been doing. Justice League was supposed to be a long-term thing, but they rushed into it without even doing a Cyborg movie or a Flash movie or an Aquaman movie first um, or mm. Man of Steel 2. So they got to stop trying to catch up and just tell good stories, man. Just tell good... Just just make good movies. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're actually kind of in a, in, a, in a good spot right now with that. I mean, that sounds kind of crazy because they're not in a great spot, but I think that... Coming up in the next few years with James Gunn now breathing this kind of new direction, new life into it, Marvel's kind of experiencing its hangover from Endgame. It's having a hard time getting out of and 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 regenerating the same hype for. Uh, and so now now that that Marvel feels a little bit spent right now, 
it's a good time for DC to kind of strike out on its own here. Wait, so you don't think superhero fatigue will affect DC? I do, but James Gunn had a really good quote recently, which I like. He's, he was asked about superhero fatigue. Which I think people were asking, you know, do you think that's going to affect your tenure at DC now? Do you think you're going to see diminishing returns? And he said, I don't think superhero fatigue is a thing. He said, I think that cookie cutter stories that are churned out, you know, like assembly line style that people feel like they've seen before is the fatigue that's setting in. When you have like a really compelling story with with real emotional stakes and characters that people really enjoy and that are good and that you can really connect to, things like Guardians 3, which I thought was, I mean, when I came out of Guardians 3, I thought, shit, this might be like the final Marvel movie for a very long time that I'm like, feel like really matters because yeah. you kind of got all this equity with these new movies now. That was kind of the last like pre endgame Marvel franchise that was still going besides Spider-Man. And it just felt like, damn, like, I don't I don't see any movies on the horizon, maybe Captain America, New World Order, whatever, that, like, have that same kind of draw for me. And, but, that's because, and, and also Guardians 3 could not, you know, I kind of went to see it because Guardians, but I came out of it really loving it. And I didn't feel any superhero fatigue from that. I felt like I had actually been a long time since I'd seen a movie, a superhero movie that I enjoyed on that level. A, of a good movie Guardians. is a good movie. You know what a I'm good saying? Movie is Exactly, and and don't dilute the product. I mean, he does have some some HBO Max shows in the pipeline, like uh, you know, Lanterns is one of them. Waller, uh, which is a character he really likes, he's attached to the Suicide Squad. Peace Peacemaker um, season two is another one. Peacemaker season two, I really liked Peacemaker. Too. Me too. Uh, Me too. It's a good show. Booster Gold. These these could end up being She Hulk shows. You know, these could end up being kind oh, of. Oh God. Uh, not saying that bad, but like shows that people cite as contributors to the whole superhero fatigue thing. Things that feel like homework to watch because there's just so much of it. And you feel like, well, I kept up with all of it before, but now, like, holy shit, I'm having a hard time giving a shit about these, um, all these different product projects. And you don't, sure, you, they say you don't have to watch each one, but, you know, I don't know. It's, it's all part of the same shared universe. It does feel like somewhat required watching to a point. Yeah, so and he's I, he's also saying too that he's gonna they're gonna make video games and animated series that also are in the same universe, sort of like how in Star Wars you have Clone Wars and Rebels and Bad Batch. They're animated, yeah. but they're canon to the actual Star Wars lore. So we're gonna be getting that as well with this. So like I said, at least he's got direction. But is it too late? I think Superman Legacy. I, I'm being honest with you. I think Superman Legacy has to be like a near flawless movie at this point. They have to be very careful who they cast, not just as Clark, but also as Lois and as Lex Luthor, because if those characters are going to be in it, which they have to be as Superman, they're going to be in it for the long haul, because those are like the characters that are always there. Brainiac doesn't matter that much. Right. Lex yeah. Luthor's almost always... I mean, Gene Hackman did a pretty good job, but, they, they, but the Patrick, uh, you know... Kevin Spacey and uh, and Jesse Eisenberg were just so bad. I almost feel like Lex Luthor is. They need to kind of really make sure they nail him because he's important. He's the Joker. I mean, people don't realize how important to the Superman dynamic Lex Luthor is in the Metropolis landscape and everything like that. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Super and, and Superman Legacy is really truly the linchpin, which is why I think he's making sure that he directs it himself and he oversees the whole thing super closely. Oh, he is One directing he, it? I thought he was just writing he, it. Oh, James is directing it. He's writing it, directing it. He's really, really invested in the okay. Superman movie. Okay. And it, it makes me so happy. I Superman is one of my favorite superheroes, so I'm a little bit biased here and think and you know stating how important to the mythology I think he is for DC. But um and you know you can have movies without Superman and the DC universe will still function, but he did something very, very right, which I liked, which is when he did an announcement, he showed images or covers of certain comics that he's drawing reference to. And those comics he showed were like the ones that I've always been screaming, like, why don't you adapt these stories? These are the ones you should be looking to. Ba Batman Brave and the Bold, the, the Grant Morrison run. That's my favorite Batman run. I think it's like divine inspiration. That is such a good run. The one with same writer, Grant Morrison, that does, uh, for the Superman movies, drawing inspiration from, did Superman, uh, All-Star Superman, which is the single greatest Superman story ever written. It captures all the meaning and the tone and why Superman's so special and important all in one comic. It's got the perfect Silver Age art style. Everything is so good. If he's looking to that comic to adapt, I think we're in a very good place with Superman. That is 
where you should start for sure. Oh, no, did we get disconnected? No, I'm here. I'm sorry. I was muted. What I was going to say, that's my fault. I, I, okay. I forgot to unmute. My bad. No, what I was going to say is it's funny you say that because when Snyder was around, he was going to go down the injustice route where they were going to have like evil Superman, Lois going to die. And I yeah. was like, and I was, I remember thinking to myself like, okay, is it too soon to do this? Is it, is it something you want to save for later? Because for me, like the issue is that there are so many classic stories from these characters. Some of these characters are some of the oldest characters we've ever had in the history of comics. Batman and Superman, Action Comics, Detective Comics, Flash and Lantern also. So when you have a large pool of things to adapt, it can be a little bit overwhelming to pick what you want to adapt. You know, I would love to see Death in the Family adapted, and we sort of got it with the Batfleck thing, how Robin was already dead. So it's been done. It's just, again, yeah, like... I Snyder wanted to speed run those stories and, and speed run the lore a little bit. And that was part oh, of the dude, he's The death and but, return of Superman, he speeded through that. The, the, Doomsday shouldn't have been in that movie. Why are you doing the death of Superman in your second Superman the movie, second which is also one. shared screen time with Batman? Like, that is such a jumping forward to, like, I mean, why? when I saw Doomsday show up in that movie, I was like, no, no, no. Why are you doing Doomsday? Like, it's so premature. It's such a also like '90s edgy storyline that doesn't have a ton of substance to it. To be honest, it was a huge event at the time because of the PR, but it's not a really deep storyline. It's more of like a it's more of just an iconic moment for Superman, and that right. was one of the things that Zack Snyder, uh, well, I think he was watching some video essay or something back in the day that really kind of was an epiphany for me. That Zack Snyder is a director who directs big moments, big cinematic like almost uh, yeah yeah but he doesn't do good scenes he doesn't do good dialogue the, the characters don't interact in a way where you get lost in the scene and the dialogue carries it and and he whenever, whenever he would attempt it it would just come off kind of weird and cringy like the mom's peach tea piss in a jar thing and like in the courtroom like it just was he was great at doing these cinematic freeze frames of the shot of the you know false god superman's statue or, you know, something like that, but he wasn't a good director of human interaction. And and it just, he seemed, it was like 300, you know, like the cinema, the cinematics were good, uh, but the- I hate like that movie, actor, man. The direction of the actors and even the casting, I, I thought was a little bit weird sometimes. So, so you know, that's that's gonna be a refreshing thing to break free of. I liked, I liked you know, Zach, Zach Snyder has some strengths and the Snyder Cut, being a four-hour kind of short miniseries worked a lot better than that movie for sure. Obviously, the Joss Whedon movie was a freaking nightmare. But, it's garbage. Well, well, uh, it, yeah. I think what they also have to do this time around is pick a plan and stick to it, but also, like we talked about, educate the audience. What I mean by that in this example is uh, Gunn said that the Elseworlds stories are not going to be part of the DCU. So, um, The Batman and the... Uh, I, they might not even do this anymore. There's supposed to be a black Superman movie that Michael B. Jordan was attached to for years. That's, that's probably not, uh, yeah, that, that's that, been it's got canceled. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Not, it's shell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shell. Yeah, we're probably never gonna see it, at least not for a long time. So, um, like the Batman, Robert Pattinson. That's separate. Same thing with the Penguin show. So, um, I think they have to have some kind of acknowledgement that it's else worlds. Like maybe when the film opens, you know how they have the DC logo. Maybe modify it so it says else worlds at the bottom that way fans kind of know okay this is not canon because it's gonna yeah. be confusing man like i know i have had to explain this to my casual friends because they don't have time to go on the internet and watch videos or read articles uh, especially even the ones from james gunn himself so uh, the studio has to really stay focused and, and stop being so reactionary yo they have to let gun do his thing trust him if he fucks up he fucks up but you gotta get behind someone dude you're not gonna get feige you gotta get behind someone yeah yeah i i think that uh well they put their chips and they, they tried to do that with Zack snyder but they chose the wrong guy i i think that they put too many other eggs in that Zack snyder basket who I don't really think had really proven himself up to that point. He hadn't really directed a truly like critically acclaimed, other than 300, 
which was more praised for its style and and uh, I didn't even I I hate that movie, bro. I think his best movie yeah, I don't think it's very well. Dawn yeah, no, I didn't like it even back then. Dawn of the Dead is my favorite movie he did besides the Snyder cut and uh, cuz that was a fun one and I do like the 4-hour cut of Watchmen. But again, it's just like just oh, yeah, Watchmen. That's that's probably my favorite one that he's done. I think Watchmen's not that. It gets a little boring in the final. I agree. Like third movie, and I don't like that they changed the mutant psychic squid into just an energy pulse blast. That was kind of a pussy move to me. But maybe it was a seat. Maybe it was a budget thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, they, they, they chose the wrong guy, and I feel bad for him with his daughter. That was a tragic thing to happen, yes. and then to get replaced by Joss Whedon and how he seemed to carry himself badly on the set and then of course the whole ray fisher i mean there's just been so much that's right uh, mired in controversy with this whole dceu snyder verse leading up to it and the tone which i think will be a tonal shift i think there's gonna be a major tonal shift in these dc movies i think that the they're and what i hope this is my hunch with james gunn this is the vibe i get is that they're going to be leaning into the golden and silver age tone that DC, you know, has like that. If you ever seen the the New Frontier, the animated movie, the really good DC animated movie, which is adapted from a really good DC comic. A lot of them are good, yo. They always get it on point with the with the animated ones. Yeah, they they do a pretty good job with the animated movies. Um, but they they I think are going to hopefully lean into that aesthetic and lean into that history more. They started Black Adam kind of started to acknowledge it with the Justice Society. I hope the Justice Society and I, I, who knows what the hell happened. Yeah, I, I was like gonna Fox. actually bring that up. It, do you think that yeah. now with this reboot that Shazam's just done because you've got Shazam and Black Adam both in the universe? What do you do with them? I know I know that Dwayne is probably not coming back, which is unfortunate because he also wanted to do that Black Adam movie for like twenty years. But again, it goes back to the the problem okay. here. That's- Mm-hmm. That's just like Zack Snyder. They they gave this like, they gave too much. They gave it too much stroke to the actor. wrong guy. Yeah. And, and and he didn't know what the hell he wanted. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. He wanted, he, they they offered him the role of Shazam or Black Adam. He chose Black Adam because he likes the villainous antihero role. And Black Adam has at times been an antihero, but he really is Shazam's arch nemesis. But The Rock clearly didn't have those plans. He wanted to just be. The Rock, you know, or like a, or not The Rock, but like he, he, I think he has in his contract, like he can never lose a fight and he can never like be full. I thought that was guy. only, I thought that was only in the uh, Fast and Furious movies that he couldn't lose a fight. I think that's part of his contract rider in all movies. That's, I think that, but that's, that's just, dude, it's fake. It's a movie. Like he used to be a wrestler. You should know it's fake. And what's, what's no, funny is like, he lost a lot when he was a wrestler too, despite being a top guy. Right. Um, yeah. Weird. No, that's funny, right? It's he weird. Won, no, he started. He started as a baby face and then he got success when he turned heel, right? So it was like, uh, well, I don't know the history of, of The Rocks too much. But right. he he decided to, like, exert this kind of dictatorial creative control over the Shazam or the Black Adam movie and then the future of the DCU demanding that Superman, you know, be his arch nemesis instead of The Flash. And he thought he was above The Flash movie because they were kitty bullshit. I don't know if he saw or like an early review or something for Shazam 2 knowing it was going to be bad and wanted to kind of unhitch his wagon from that train. I thought Shaz- Shazam 1 was a really freaking good movie. So, right. So I was a little disappointed. But when I saw Shazam 2, I didn't really like it. So maybe that was why. But again, it was it was putting too much faith in this kind of macho, machismo, meathead version of the DCU, which I think was a little bit not the right vibe. It was very gritty, 90s. Maybe they're trying to separate themselves from the cheeriness of Marvel. It, it just came off a little unsophisticated to me and a little bit, mm, I don't know, unsubtle. I, I, and I kind of like the Black Adam movie, too. I really like the um, Justice Society of America as characters. I love that. Are, I love that. Pierce, Pierce Brosnan was great. He was great. And I like Hawkman, too. I like uh, his history as, as you know, a reincarnation. Uh, Dr. Fate is a really cool character. Um, so I would like to see them retained. Who knows how many characters they'll deem worthy to continue on in the James Gunn verse, my hunch is that they don't acknowledge them for a very long time, and that they come, you know, once the goodwill of the audience has been brought back from these gun movies, we'll maybe see these guys trickle back in a little bit. We'll see, like maybe Zachary Levi will come back as Shazam because he does work as that character if he was given a better script. The script for Shazam One was way better than the script for Shazam Two, and I think it can be, he can be a pretty good character. Um, plus, I don't know. He's just classic. It's Captain Marvel. He's, he's Shazam. He's really Captain Marvel. Yeah. But you know, right. The Captain, original Captain Marvel. 
can't delete all these characters from the DCU just because they were present in the first, you know, version that they've now rebooted. You can't just do away with all these characters. That's kind of the opposite of the vibe uh, of what I think they're trying to do, which is embrace the history and kind of try to get it right this time. And uh, so, you know, unless they're going to recast everybody, just my only hope is please don't abandon those characters. You know? Yeah, they've got to pick someone with direction, which I guess would be Gunn, and stick with him. You can't be given Dwayne, you know, creative control and, and you know, hire another actor and give him creative control. They can change the script on the fly. Like, it's just... It's a, it's a complete mess, and it's funny because most of these cinematic universes have fallen apart, with the exception of the MCU and the mm-hmm. Conjuring universe, because even the Spider-Verse that Sony is making, not the animated one, the live-action mm-hmm. one, Morbius was a nothing movie. Yeah, and then you've got Craven, which is f- feels like it's going to be a nothing story. So, this part two, basically, to me. I don't know. It's just, to me, yeah. the Sony thing like almost desperation on screen like they are trying to make something they're kind of trying to squeeze water from a stone or whatever that saying is like they have the rights to these spider-man villains but they want their own mcu so bad they're like you know fuck it we'll make them heroes and we'll try to build our own cinematic universe out of all these characters which which really are part of an ensemble really only function as spider-man villains they can't carry a franchise they're not i agree you know, joker could uh, jo- and that's another and that's another joker else world story yeah, yeah, yeah that's another else world story the joker and harley quinn movie it's another one coming out you know yeah. I, 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 people there's people who at one time thought that the joker in the joker film is the same as jared leto's joker that's what i'm saying bro like by the time they're done, you're going to have 13 Batmans and uh, 55 Jokers because of all the recasting and the changes. And just stick to one thing, yo. Like, it's just funny because Feige has proven that, even though it hasn't been perfect, that leadership is what matters. And nobody in that company is a freaking leader. Mm-hmm. So maybe it'll, yeah. it'll improve. I don't know. As a fan, I'm very frustrated. I still want to see that. I still want to see those characters come back because I do like Gal Gadot as Diana. I do like Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Ezra Miller, I could give or take. They could use the guy from the Flash TV show. It'd probably be a better idea. Um, And then, you know, Cavill, he was fine for what it was. I enjoyed Ben Affleck more than I thought he would, but there's been so many guys to play Batman that I'm fine with it. But I still feel like it's, it's, oh man, I don't even know. I don't even know what else to tell you. (laughs) I don't even know. Here's, I'll end on this. Here's the the thing I really want for the DC next movie going, or the next phase of the DC universe, which we just got in the Flash, and I hope they continue. I loved the blue bat suit that they finally did in the Flash movie. But that, uh, that that's what's his name? Ben Affleck rocks in that opening sequence. Oh yeah, the blue and the gray. I was so happy we finally got a blue cowl and cape like that. I thought I would never see because there's really no reason for it. But like I guess it was his daytime suit. Anyway, that yeah. was that was that. I hope they do more of that kind of thing where they like, you know, it's kind of like seeing Wolverine finally don his yellow outfit in the movie. Like, you know, just give us the, the, have the balls to adapt the, the, you know. Well, I I like, I I always like the idea of Batman having different suits for different purposes. Like if he's going to be swimming, he can get one suit. That's how it was back in the day with toys. I used to have the Batman toys and they all had different colors. They did that for the Flash movie. The uh, when he opens his his little thing, all those suit, you know, he's got his main bat suit in the middle, but the ones surrounding it were all based off the Kenner Toys series from the Batman '89 movie, and they all have this kind of toyetic, uh, a little bit cartoony design. Like there's like the hydro power one, you know, and there's like the flight suit one, and they all have a little bit of this blocky toyish. Um, they were designed by Joe Canones, he's a very good artist, but he uh, but there was an homage to the toys from the 90s that were, you know, came in the wake of that movie. So, pretty cool. Right. Well, let's hope that they uh, they can deliver it and actually be consistent. A lot of these projects coming out, casuals are not going to have any interest in them. I'm kind of borderline on them. Lantern and stuff like that I'll check out, but some of the other ones, I'm not too interested in it. So, really, I feel like if you're a DC fan and you want to see these characters come to life... Your best bet is to stick with the animated movies. I mean, that's that's you're gonna get very few of those are bad. You're gonna get mm-hmm. real story um, adaptations. You're gonna get you know a lot of them have beautiful animation, and very few of them get fucked up. And not to mention, there's also tons of them. I think we're 
I think if you look at it going all the way back to Mask of the Phantasm or even before that, there's got to be like 55, 60 of these movies total. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really really good. Uh, well, they're most of the most of the time they're good. A couple of the Batman ones, like the the Dark Knight Returns and and uh, the Killing Joke, I didn't really like. But I really like the Wonder Woman one with the Justice Society, the and set in World War II. They've they've been mostly hits, mostly uh, more hits than misses for sure. Yeah, yeah. Unlike the movies, they get it right. It's just funny how they get it right for the animated series, but get it wrong for the movies. Anyways, y'all, let us know in the comments how you would fix the DCEU. Thanks, Hayden, for being here, bro. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. All right. Take care.